Hi, I'm Brett Kovar from Cincinnati, Ohio, and we're in Kauai, Hawaii, and you can't believe how happy I am to be here. They had a big storm in Cincinnati, they shut down the expressway, and yesterday my cryostat blew up. So there's, this is a wonderful place to be for a week. My talk was on 10 tips in 60 minutes, and we talked about the use of different kinds of surgical tools in your office and your, and your setup of your surgical tools in your office to maximize your efficiency and maximize your income and, and, uh, and to make your patients happy, to make your patients safer, to make your office staff happy. I hope you learned a few tips. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jocelyn Kirby. I'm from Penn State and we just did the 60 tips in 60 minutes. So if I wanted to share a couple of the big ones with you, it would be HS flares. Two things to keep in mind. One would be topical resorcinol. It's really hard for our patients to drop what they're doing when they have a flare up and come to us for intralesional triamcinolone. So topical resorcinol has really changed my practice and really some of the lives of patients because they can carry it with them when they're on vacation or at work. Resorcinol, 15% in cream, used on a lesion as soon as it starts, twice a day until it goes away. Main side effects are gonna be a little bit of maybe post-inflammatory color change or peeling. Get it at a compounding pharmacy. Prices vary anywhere from about $30 to $50. If you can't get it in your area, consider topical eczemol. It's been a really nice backup when I'm not able to get the resource and need. Second thing for HS flares, intralesional triamcinolone. What's the actual data? Data shows it works. And what we can promise our patients is that they should have a decrease in pain in 24 to 48 hours. But it's not just a little whiff of triamcinolone, it's a pretty substantial amount. It's about half an ml of triamcinolone, usually 10 milligrams per ml. Third point, in thinking about HS all the time, I sometimes think about the comorbidities that go with HS, and one of them is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And so finding therapies that might work for both. One of them, metformin. Metformin is a really great therapy for polycystic ovarian syndrome and HS, but talk to your patients with PCOS alone because it can really help with the acanthosis nigricans. Second great agent for PCOS would be spironolactone because it's going to help with the acneiform eruptions, the hair, and also is a great agent for their HS. I'm Dr. Adelaide Abair speaking to you from the winter clinical meeting in Hawaii. I want to share with you some of the tips we discussed in the session this morning. First, I want to talk about parent positioning when you're doing laser treatments or other procedures. Have the parent actually lie on the table and hold the small child. This keeps the parent busy. You have an extra unpaid for pair of hands, and it keeps the parent from potentially fainting if they see their own child's blood. That saves time, energy, keeps everybody busy and occupied in the room. It's a great tip. Also, if you ever walked into the room and the children just start crying just as you enter the door, what do you do? How do you calm that child? I use a tip I call blowing out the birthday candles. I hold up my finger, I tell the child, pretend it's your birthday, let's blow out the candles, everybody in the room sings if we can. A child simply can't blow and cry at the same time. This happens to also work for your own children, grandchildren, nieces, or nephews if you need that tip. I want to go on to a little trick I learned from a colleague in PD Darm Fred Golly. Ever had ring warps develop in your patients after you froze them? You can do what we call a pizza freeze. You freeze at 2 o'clock like a pizza slice, and you cross over and freeze at 9 o'clock in a pizza slice motion. This keeps the patient from developing a ring warp. They'll be happy, and you won't get complaints or callbacks. Hey, I'm Larry Green, clinical professor of dermatology at George Washington University School of Medicine in Washington, D.C., and the moderator for the 60 clinical tips session which was so fun and interesting. For example, I talked about tips from treating molluscum to my favorite suture for tight closures to fillers, things to help with fillers. And here's Deanna Glazer. Hey, I'm Deanna Glazer, St. Louis University, and I contributed some fun tips on hyperhidrosis, chemical peels, and just some things about practice management. Hi, I'm Bonnie Aluski, professor of dermatology at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. And some of my tips included, look at the palms in patients who itch. Their cause of their itch could be atopic dermatitis if you see hyperlinear palms. So the patient with pryga, the patient with lichen simplex chronicus, the patient with generalized pruritus who has hyperlinear palms might indeed have AD. 
And then I gave a couple pearls on hair disease. Uh, women and men with male or female pattern alopecia, oral minoxidil is an excellent option. I use one tablet or two and a half milligrams a day in men with male pattern alopecia. And in women, I use generally a half a tablet, but sometimes a quarter tablet. And you can use this or even a higher dose in treating alopecia areata, cicatricial alopecia, and even frontal fibrosing alopecia. And a pearl of frontal fibrosing alopecia is that dutesteride was found to be in one study the most effective drug of everything available. And that's available in a 0.5 milligram capsule, so you can't cut it in half, and no blood work is needed. The caution should be given if a woman is, has a history of breast cancer. I wouldn't give it in that situation.